Nazi Germany and homosexuality. Moral decline prior to Nazi Germany, which spawned an increase in the acceptance of homosexuality in German society, occurred about 35 years before the Nazis took power and it paved the way for the Nazis to take power. A large part of the increase of support for homosexuality beforehand, including Germany becoming the birthplace of the so-called gay rights movement, originated with a particular man, Karl Heinrich Ulrichs, who had been molested by his riding instructor at age 14 and attributed his homosexuality to a third sex instead of his molestation. The Nazis were rabid evolutionists who insisted that the German master race should dominate other so-called inferior races. Belief in evolution has been linked to a decline of morality. The American journalist H. R. Knickerbocker wrote about the homosexual Nazi leader Ernst Röhm, Rome's chiefs, men of the rank of Gruppenführer or Obergruppenführer, commanding units of several hundred thousand stormtroopers, were almost without exception homosexuals. Indeed, unless a stormtroop officer were homosexual, he had no chance of advancement. Ernst Röhm was the only Nazi leader to address Hitler by his first name Adolf rather than Mainführer which helped prompt rumors that Hitler was a homosexual. The historian Lothar Machten and others have uncovered historical evidence that suggest Adolf Hitler may have been a homosexual. However, the sexuality of Hitler is a matter of scholarly debate and historians are divided on whether Hitler was homosexual, bisexual, heterosexual, or asexual. Later when Adolf Hitler came into power, he chose to persecute homosexuals in order to advance his notions of racial struggle. Yet at the same time, Hitler retained some sexual deviance in positions of power within the Nazi leadership. For example, Hermann Goering was known to dress in drag, paint his nails and put rouge on his cheeks. Another example is the case of Max Bielas who had a harem of little Jewish boys. He liked them young, no older than 17. He had a kind of parody of the shepherds of Arcadia, their role was to take care of the camp flock of geese. They were dressed like little princes, Bielas had a little barracks built for them that looked like a doll's house, Bielas sought in Treblinker only the satisfaction of his homosexual instincts, Steiner 117f. Dot. Homosexuality was supported in Nazi Germany, although modern gay rights activists claim that an estimated 100,000 homosexual men were arrested for this crime, of whom approximately 5,000 to 15,000 were interned in concentration camps. See Homosexuals and the Holocaust for further details. Paragraph 175 banned homosexuality long before Hitler was even born. As the Pink Swastika by Scott Lively and Kevin Abrams pointed out, 85% of Nazi homosexuals were of the Butch's faction while the other 15% were of the FOM faction, and as the Butch's persecuted the FOM, today's LGBT movement is not monolithic either as they claim that drag queens offend the transgender. Yet, according to some historians, homosexual men constituted the core of the Nazi party in Germany. In contrast to the wimpy Swiss homosexual, Nazi homosexuals were ultra-macho or butch. The OSS addressed the reason why so many homosexuals found the Nazi party inviting. This may be due to the fact that they are all fundamentally social outcasts and consequently have a community of interests which tends to make them think and feel more or less alike. In this connection it is interesting to note that homosexuals, too, frequently regard themselves as a special form of creation or as chosen ones whose destiny it is to initiate a new order, the fact that underneath they feel themselves to be different and ostracized from normal social contacts usually makes them easy converts to a new social philosophy which does not discriminate against them. Being among civilization's discontents, they are always willing to take a chance of something new which holds any promise of improving their lot. Brian Fisher of the Idaho Values Alliance writes. Even today in America, it is chic in some homosexual circles for individuals to wear replicas of Nazi Germany uniforms, complete with iron crosses, stormtrooper outfits, military boots and even swastikas. In 1941 the Office of Strategic Services prepared a psychological analysis of Adolf Hitler. Langer attributed the belief of many that Hitler was homosexual, a, from the fact that he does show so many feminine characteristics, and, b, 
from the fact that there were so many homosexuals in the party during the early days and many continue to occupy important positions. Langer added, it does seem that Hitler feels much more at ease with homosexuals. Some parts of the American Nazi movement are explicitly homosexual. The National Socialist League, a group that existed from the mid to late 70s, restricted its membership to homosexual Nazis. Scott Lively wrote, Most people don't realize that male homosexuality does not always lean to the effeminate. Historically, male homosexuality was much more often associated with hyper-masculine warrior cults which were usually very brutal and very politically aggressive. The most recent example was in Germany. Hitler's initial power base when he launched the Nazi party was a private homosexual military force organized and trained by a notorious pederast named Gerhard Rossbach. Rossbach's homosexual partner Ernst Röhm, who was also Hitler's partner in forming and building the Nazi party, converted the gay Rossbach bund into the dreaded S.A. Brown shirts. Largely because of the Frankfurt School, and in particular Theodore Adorno and Herbert Marcuse, redefining fascism and Nazism as being right-wing and manipulating the American Jewish Committee as such, the Nazis being largely composed of sexual deviants and bohemians, including homosexuals, was often ignored in academic circles and various leftist groups, and many times the Nazis were falsely assumed to be sexually rigid and puritanical in their sexual relationships.